Welcome to the virtual grocery store tour for post-bariatric surgery patients. Today we will take you on a virtual tour through the grocery store. We will explore each food group in your meal plan and discuss what a serving is, where to find appropriate foods, what to look for on the nutrition label, and recommended products. Let's get started. Let's first review some general tips to keep in mind when grocery shopping. The first tip is don't go to the store hungry. You will be more tempted to purchase not so healthy foods or foods that are not included in your meal plan. Plan your meals ahead of time and make a list. Planning your meals in advance will help you avoid last minute convenience and fast food purchases and will assure you healthy meals every day. Most of your shopping should be done on the perimeter of the grocery store. This is where you will find the most nutrient dense options. Don't always trust the front of a package. Food companies use many marketing techniques to entice you into thinking their product is healthy. Don't be fooled by the front of package claims. Always look at the nutrition facts and the ingredients. And don't be pressured by end cap sales displays. These purchases are usually impulse buys that aren't included in your grocery list and aren't usually the most healthy items. As I mentioned before, stick to your list. Now that you are a post-bariatric surgery patient, this is your meal plan for life. Your dietitians have probably shared this information with you at your follow-up appointments. This will be an exciting time as you experience weight loss, but it will also require you to follow this meal plan for life. As we go through our grocery store tour today, I will discuss foods that are included in each food group and where to find them in the grocery store. This is a sample grocery store layout. There are many aisles and sections of the grocery store, and some of these aisles present tempting foods that aren't included in your meal plan. Has someone ever told you to shop the perimeter of the store? Maybe you didn't quite understand what they meant, or you thought, great, I guess this means I'll be starving. If you take a look at this sample layout, you'll see various colored dots scattered throughout the store. These colors correlate with the food groups in your meal plan. If you follow the gray colored dashed line around the perimeter of the store, notice that all of the colors are represented. This means that you can find all of the food groups on the perimeter of the store. And these options are usually fresh, nutrient dense, and less processed. This is a sample nutrition facts label. There is a lot of information included on the label, but luckily I'm going to point out just a few things that you need to focus on. First, always take a look at the serving size. Your bariatric serving size may differ than what's listed. You may need to adjust the nutrition facts since the nutrition facts are based on the serving size that is listed. As we explore the different food groups today, I will discuss appropriate serving sizes. After checking the serving size, take a look at the calories per serving. Your caloric intake per day will be much less than the general audience for which this food label is designed. It's important to see how a food fits into your total daily calories and meal plan. Next, take a look at the total carbohydrate. This part of the label lists the total carbohydrate and then underneath may break that value up into dietary fiber, sugars, and sugar alcohols. For example, this food has 21 grams of total carbohydrate per serving. Of the 21 grams, 2 grams are dietary fiber and 2 grams are sugar. The remaining 17 grams of carbohydrate is from other starches. Dietary fiber will help keep you full for longer, so look to see if this is in the food. This label is for some crackers which are considered in your starch food group. You get two servings of starch per day. On average, a starch serving has 15 grams of carbohydrate and about 80 to 100 calories. Some products, such as milk and fruit, have natural sugars, and some foods have added sugars. The label does not differentiate. Always check the ingredient list to see if there are added sugars. For example, if you look at the blue ingredient list in the lower left corner, sugar is listed as an ingredient. Your meal plan requires that you avoid all added sugars for life after surgery. There is no sugar alcohol in this product, so it is not listed. Sugar alcohols may upset your GI system, so try to limit these. Next, take a look at the protein. Protein is a very important part of your meal plan because protein will help keep you feeling full for longer. You'll notice a list of percentages on the right side of the label. These are the percent daily values which are based on a 2000 calorie diet, which you are not going to be following. You can ignore these values. If you look towards the bottom of the label, you will see information on vitamins and minerals. You can also ignore these values. Your dietitians will monitor your vitamin and mineral intake at follow-up appointments. Hopefully this helps in your understanding of the nutrition facts label. 
As we go through the food groups today, I will point out more specific things to pay attention to on the label. As I mentioned in the last slide, it is important to look in the ingredients section for added sugars. Remember that added sugars are those that aren't found naturally. This can be difficult because sugar isn't always listed as sugar. There are many reasons to avoid added sugars. First of all, gastric bypass surgery creates a small pouch which is connected directly to your small intestine. When you consume added sugars, they dump or empty out of the pouch too quickly into the intestine. This may cause you to feel what is called dumping syndrome, a series of symptoms such as diarrhea, cold sweats, nausea, vomiting, lightheadedness, and the urgent need to lie down. This is not something that you want to experience. Dumping should not occur with the sleeve gastrectomy since the muscle regulating flow out of the stomach is left intact during surgery. However, if you want to maximize your weight loss, you should still avoid concentrated sweets. And this applies to those with the gastric band and those who have not had surgery for that matter. Here is a list of other, other ingredients that indicate added sugar. Remember how I told you earlier not to trust the front of a package? Here are some examples of health claims that you may see on the front of a package. Light, organic, free, natural, gluten-free, low-fat, sugar-free, reduced fat. What a mouthful. Some claims are defined by the government, whereas others are not. It is important to understand the meaning behind these claims in order to be a better shopper. Let's look at these claims in more detail. Here is a list of claims and their definitions. I have highlighted some of the claims that you may see with certain food groups. Calorie-free may be found on a variety of foods and indicates that there is less than 5 calories per serving. You may see low-calorie, low-fat, or fat-free on foods in the fat group. This includes salad dressings, margarines, mayonnaise, and cooking spray. Notice that just because an item is fat-free or low-fat, which means that it has less than 0.5 grams or 3 grams or less of fat per serving, doesn't mean that it is calorie-free or low-calorie. When it comes to meats, look for lean and extra lean. These meats are lower in total fat and saturated fat. What the government defines as a serving is not your bariatric serving, so you need to be a detective sometimes. With meats, they are talking about 4-ounce portions, so a lean meat would have less than 10 grams of fat in a 4-ounce portion, and extra lean would be less than 5 grams of fat in 4 ounces. You may see the term light on yogurt or milk substitutes. Light indicates that the product has one-third less calories or 50% less fat or sodium than the regular version of the product. Light doesn't necessarily mean that the product is low in calories, fat, or sodium because it is dependent on how much the regular version contains. Always look at the nutrition facts to see if the food fits into your meal plan. You may see reduced sodium on canned vegetables. This means that the product has 25% less sodium than the regular version. Though a sodium restriction is not included in your meal plan, it is good advice to limit your sodium to less than 2400 milligrams per day. The claim high fiber may be on breads and other starches. Remember that fiber will help keep you full for longer. But again, check the rest of the nutrition facts label to see if the food fits into your meal plan of two starchy foods per day. Sugar-free is sometimes used on jams and jellies that are made with artificial sweeteners. It means that there is less than 0.5 grams of sugar per serving. Just because it is sugar-free, however, doesn't mean it is calorie-free. No added sugar is commonly found on yogurts. Remember that milk and yogurt contain natural sugars, so just because an item says no sugar added doesn't mean it won't have grams of sugar listed on the label, which are indicating natural sugars. You should look for the no sugar added claim because this means that sugar or sugar containing ingredients aren't added. Notice that the term natural is not defined. Natural does not equal calorie free and does not necessarily fit into your meal plan. I have even seen foods like natural hot dogs out there which of course are not a good choice for you. 100% organic and organic is defined, but as with the natural claim, it does not mean calorie-free and does not necessarily fit into your meal plan. Always check the nutrition facts and the ingredients. Let's start our grocery store tour with the meat and meat substitute group. Notice that this group takes up a large portion of your meal plan. These foods are high in protein, which will keep you full for longer. You need six servings per day. 
As I mentioned previously, you need six servings of meat or meat substitute each day. One serving is any amount of meat or meat substitute that is equal to about 35 to 55 calories and seven grams of protein. Some examples are listed. One ounce of meat, poultry, or fish is one serving. The picture depicted in the upper right corner of your screen shows three ounces of chicken, which is about the size of a deck of cards. If you imagine this cut into thirds, one third would be one serving. You will typically have about two ounces of meat, poultry, or fish at a meal. One ounce of low fat or fat free cheese is also one serving and is about the size of four dice. Other items that are one serving are one large egg, one half cup of cooked beans, one quarter cup of cottage cheese or ricotta cheese, and two tablespoons of peanut butter or other nut butter such as almond or sunflower seed butter. Notice the note about nut butters. Nuts are very calorie dense, meaning they have a lot of calories in a small amount. Two tablespoons contain seven grams of protein, but also contains about 200 calories. If you choose to consume nut butters, be sure to see how they fit into your meal plan. This is a list of meat and meat substitutes to choose and ones to avoid. It is important to choose lean, skinless meats to cut back on calories and fat. When buying beef, look for round and loin cuts. When buying cheese, cottage cheese, or ricotta cheese, choose low-fat or fat-free versions. Beans, lentils, edamame, and tofu are great plant-based sources of protein. Avoid processed meat such as bologna, sausage, spam, hot dogs, and bacon. You should also avoid chicken or turkey with skin, fried meats and fish, and canned tuna and oil. The meat department is usually in the back of the grocery store. This is where you will find fresh or frozen meat, poultry, and fish. Some items may be offered at the meat counter and others may be prepackaged. Deli meats can be found at the deli counter as well as with the other prepackaged meats. Though a sodium restriction is not included in your meal plan, look for deli meats that are lower in sodium. Eggs and egg substitutes can be found near the dairy items such as milk, yogurt, and cheese. You can find meat substitutes such as tofu, meatless hot dogs and deli slices, and other soy analogs near the fresh produce. There is typically a refrigerated section dedicated to these items. Canned tuna, chicken, and salmon can be found near other canned items. Most foods in the meat group will have a nutrition label, with the exception of meats that are purchased from the butcher at the meat counter. Fresh prepackaged meat is now required to have a label. Use this to help you choose lean meats. There are a few things that you should look at on the nutrition label when buying foods in the meat group. Always take a look at the serving size. Remember that your bariatric portion may differ from what's listed on the label. In this example, the serving size is four ounces, but your bariatric portion will be about two ounces, so you would need to divide the nutrition facts in half. Next, take a look at the calories. Also take a look at the total fat. Leaner meats have less fat and thus less calories. And lastly, always take a look at the protein content to determine how many servings of protein the food contains. Remember that one serving of meat or meat alternative should have seven grams of protein. Most meat, poultry, and fish do not contain carbohydrates. However, some foods such as deli meat, imitation crab meat, and breaded fish or poultry will contain carbohydrates. The health halo effect is the perception that a food is healthy based on one or more healthy attributes of the food. We are all guilty of thinking a food is good for us just because it says low fat or it contains vegetables. These foods are not always the best choice and can stall your weight loss. When it comes to protein, you've probably been told to choose poultry over beef. However, nutritionally, poultry is not always a better choice than beef. Let's use ground poultry and beef as examples. The nutrition information that is shown on the screen is based on a four ounce portion, which is what is typically listed on the nutrition facts label. Your bariatric portion will be about two ounces though. First look at the fresh ground poultry, which is 8515. This means that it is 85% lean and 15% fat. Compare this to the 8515 ground beef. Notice that the nutrition content is very similar. Now compare the fresh ground turkey to the 93.7 lean ground beef and 96.4 extra lean ground beef. Both the lean and extra lean ground beef would be a better choice than the 85.15 ground turkey. 
Now compare the fresh ground chicken breasts to the lean and extra lean ground beef. The lean ground beef is nutritionally similar to the fresh ground chicken breast, but in this case, the extra lean ground beef would be the best choice. Ground chicken and turkey can contain a mix of breast meat, dark meat, and skin. The dark meat and skin increase the calorie and fat content of the meat. Look for ground turkey breast or chicken breast or look for extra lean on the label to be sure that you are getting a lean cut. Shown on this slide is three nutrition facts labels for ground turkey. In the store, these look almost identical. The ground turkey is a bit darker though than the ground turkey breast, so that might help you choose the breast. Notice that as calories and fat decrease, the protein content increases. Fattier cuts of meat and poultry contain less protein because the fat takes up more space and there's less room for protein. So though you may be paying a little extra for the leaner ground turkey breast, you're getting more protein for your buck. These are some meat and meat substitute products that we love. Below each picture is the suggested bariatric portion size with the corresponding calorie and protein content. Notice that some of the recommended portion sizes are one serving of meat and others are two servings. For example, two ounces of Tyson grilled and ready chicken breast strips is equal to 67 calories and 14 grams of protein. This portion is equal to two servings from the meat group because one serving is about 35 to 55 calories and seven grams of protein. We recommend two ounces of meat, poultry, or fish because this is an appropriate portion to have at meals. One Baby Bell mozzarella cheese is one serving from the meat group because it is 50 calories and six grams of protein. You can choose your portion sizes, but be sure to get a total of six servings from the meat group each day. The Starkist Tuna Creation Pouches and Chicken of the Sea Salmon Cups are very convenient and can be easily taken with you on the go. The Boca Meatless Ground Crumbles can be used as a substitute for ground meat and poultry. The Friendship Whip Cottage Cheese is a spreadable cottage cheese that is packed with protein and can be spread onto fruit slices or used as a dip. The next food group in your meal plan is the Milk and Milk Substitute Group. Foods in this group contain calcium, vitamin D, and protein. You need two servings each day. One serving from the milk and milk substitute group is equal to 90 calories and 8 grams of protein. Some examples are listed. One cup of skim or fat-free milk, one cup of skim or 1% lactate milk, one cup of unsweetened light soy milk, and six ounces of fat-free, plain, no sugar added, or light yogurt are all equal to one serving. This is a list of milk and milk substitutes to choose and ones to avoid. Choose skim or fat-free and 1% products. These are the lowest in calories and fat. Soy milk is a great milk alternative because it contains about the same amount of protein as regular cow's milk. Just be sure it is unsweetened. Other milk alternatives such as almond and rice milk are much lower in protein and for this reason do not count towards your two servings of milk or milk substitutes. When buying yogurt, choose ones that are no sugar added or plain with no added flavoring. Avoid high fat products such as 2% or whole milk, half and half, cream, and regular full fat yogurt or flavored yogurt. Foods in the milk and milk substitute group are typically found in the back of the store in the dairy section. You can also find shelf-stable milk near the canned or baking goods. It is often cheaper to purchase a large 32-ounce container of plain, non-fat yogurt compared to buying individual containers of yogurt. If you buy a large container of yogurt, you can portion out your servings and add fresh or frozen fruit for sweetness. Though the individual containers of yogurt may be more expensive, they are very convenient and are pre-portioned. You'll have to decide what works for you and what you're willing to pay a little extra for. As with all foods, you want to look at the serving size and calories. Most individual containers of yogurt are one serving. Take a look at the total fat. You should choose non-fat or 1% milk options, which will contain 0 to 3 grams of fat per serving. Always look at the total carbohydrate to see if there are added sugars. Milk and milk products such as yogurt contain natural sugar known as lactose, so these foods will always contain some carbohydrates. One cup of milk and six ounces of plain regular yogurt have about 12 grams of carbohydrate 
and six ounces of plain Greek yogurt has six to seven grams of carbohydrate per serving, and this is all from natural lactose. So if the label indicates more than 12 grams or six to seven grams of carbohydrate for these foods, there is likely added sugar. You can also look at the ingredients list to see if there are added sugars. Refer back to slide six for a list of sugar ingredients. Some yogurts will say, no sugar added on the front of the package. This means that no additional sugar has been added, but there will still be natural lactose. Another thing to look at is the protein content. Greek yogurt will contain more protein than regular yogurt. Remember that protein helps to keep you full, feel full longer, so try to choose yogurts that are higher in protein. Cow's milk and soy milk are also good sources of protein. You've probably heard about Greek yogurt from your dietitians or have seen it in the grocery store. Greek yogurt is more strained than regular yogurt, which gives it a thicker consistency because more water is removed and there is more protein per serving. There is also less carbohydrate from lactose because some of it is lost during the straining process. To be clear, both plain non-fat Greek yogurt and plain non-fat regular yogurt can be a healthy addition to your meal plan. However, since Greek yogurt has more protein, it will help keep you full for longer. Take a look at the examples on the screen. Six ounces of plain non-fat yogurt has 12 grams of carbohydrate and nine grams of protein, compared to the plain non-fat Greek yogurt, which has seven grams of carbohydrate and 18 grams of protein per six ounces. Be careful when selecting both regular and Greek yogurts. Some have lots of added sugars, which increases the calorie content. Take a look at the nutrition labels on the screen. The strawberry non-fat Greek yogurt has 20 grams of carbohydrate, whereas the plain non-fat Greek yogurt has 7 grams. Also notice that the flavored strawberry yogurt has less protein. Try adding fresh or frozen fruit or low sugar jelly to plain yogurt for added sweetness and to reap all of the benefits. These are some milk and milk substitute products that we love. Below each picture is the suggested bariatric portion size with the corresponding calorie and protein content. The YoPlay Greek 100 and Light and Fit Greek are the two flavored yogurts that we approve of. Next is the vegetable group. Foods in this group are low in calories, contain fiber, which helps keep you full for longer, and also contain vitamins and minerals. You need two servings each day. One serving from the vegetable group contains 25 calories and 2 grams of protein, so this is your cheapest food group when it comes to calories. Some examples are listed. One half cup of cooked non-starchy vegetables, one cup of raw non-starchy vegetables, one cup of raw leafy green vegetables, and one cup of chunky vegetable soup is equal to one serving. This is the food group that we love to see variety in because they are all pretty much great for you. Choose fresh or frozen non-starchy vegetables. Starchy vegetables contain more carbohydrates, so they are included in the starch group. Starchy vegetables are corn, potatoes, sweet potatoes, lima beans, peas, and winter squash. Green beans, zucchini, carrots, spinach, romaine lettuce, tomatoes, and asparagus are all examples of non-starchy vegetables. If you are purchasing canned vegetables, look for no salt added on the front of the label. Avoid vegetables that are covered in butter, cheese, cream sauces, or regular dressings. These sauces will add a lot of calories and fat. Fresh vegetables can be found in the produce section of the grocery store. Canned vegetables can be found near other canned and shelf-stable products. Look for frozen vegetables in the frozen section. Frozen vegetables can be more nutritious than fresh because they are flash frozen soon after harvesting to preserve the nutrients. Frozen vegetables are great to keep on hand. They are easy to prepare and can easily be added to meals. Fresh vegetables won't always have a nutrition facts label. However, canned and frozen vegetables will always have a label. Be sure to look at the serving size and calories. Vegetables are low in calories. However, if they are cooked in a sauce, they will have significantly more calories. Take a look at the sodium as well. Frozen and canned vegetables may have added sodium. Though a sodium restriction is not included in your meal plan, it is good to limit your sodium to less than 2400 milligrams per day. Steaming vegetables is a healthy cooking method because it does not add calories. However, don't be fooled by the steamed vegetables available in the frozen food section. Take a look at the examples on the screen. These vegetables can be steamed in your microwave 
However, they are covered in a cheese or butter sauce. These sauces add unnecessary calories and sodium. Choose the plain steamed vegetables instead and add fresh or dried herbs for flavor. Here are two other examples of frozen vegetable products. The broccoli on the top of the page has 15 calories and 90 milligrams of sodium per serving, whereas the broccoli and cheese sauce has 60 calories and 430 milligrams of sodium per serving. This is a prime example of why you should always check the label. These are some vegetable products that we love. Below each picture is a suggested bariatric portion size with the corresponding calorie and protein content. The Pick Sweet Steamables and Green Giant Valley Fresh Steamers can be found in the frozen aisle and are a quick and easy way to prepare vegetables. Broccoli slaw is a hearty option that can add extra crunch to salads and stir fries. The fruit group is the next food group in your meal plan. As with vegetables, foods in this group contain fiber, which helps to keep you full for longer, as well as vitamins and minerals. You need two servings each day. One serving of fruit is 60 calories and zero grams of protein. Some examples are listed. One half cup of unsweetened fresh, frozen, or canned fruit, one small four ounce piece of fruit, or one half of a medium banana is equal to one serving. Notice that fruit juice is not listed as an option. We want you to eat your fruit, not drink it. You will remain full when you chew up a piece of fruit because it will sit with you longer. This is not the case with juice. Choose fresh or frozen unsweetened fruit. If you're purchasing canned fruit, choose those that are canned in fruit juice or water. Avoid canned fruit in light or heavy syrup as well as frozen fruit with added sugar. Though 100% fruit juice is listed as an option, this is not always the best choice. This is because fruit juice is high in sugar and contains very little fiber. It is best to consume whole fruit to get the most benefits and least amount of calories. Remember that we want you to eat your fruit, not drink it. Fresh fruit can be found in the produce section of the grocery store. You may also find jarred and pre-chopped fruit in this section. Bulk bags of apples and oranges as well as bananas are typically the cheapest options. Canned fruits can be found near other canned and shelf stable products. Look for frozen fruit in the frozen section. Frozen fruit can be more nutritious than fresh because it is flash frozen soon after harvesting so that the nutrients are preserved. Just be sure to purchase unsweetened frozen fruit that does not have added sugar. Purchase frozen fruits in bulk to save on cost. You may not always find a label on fresh fruit, which is why it's important to measure your portions. There will be a nutrition facts label on frozen and canned fruit though. Take a look at the serving size and calories. Fruit is relatively low in calories but contains more calories than vegetables because there are more natural sugars in fruit. Similar to milk and yogurt, fruit will always contain carbohydrates because of the natural sugars that are present. Be sure to read the ingredient list. The only ingredient should be the fruit itself. Avoid fruits that have added sugar. Some fruits may have added ascorbic acid, which is also known as vitamin C. This is added to some fruits to prevent browning. Canned fruit can be a nutritious option, but be sure to read the ingredient list and choose the best option. Take a look at the two different canned peaches. The one on the left is in heavy syrup and contains added sugar from corn syrup and sugar. The one on the right is in extra light syrup and also contains added sugar. While the words extra and light sound attractive, the light peaches pictured on the right are still a poor choice because they still have added sugar in the ingredients. A one half cup portion is 60 calories, which is one serving. Though the label says same nutrients as fresh, there is typically less fiber in canned fruit because the peel is removed. When buying fruit, look for no sugar added on the label. You may see this on frozen fruit, which typically indicates that the fruit is the only ingredient. Canned fruits may also say no sugar added. These products are often packaged in water with added artificial sweeteners. And of course, fresh fruit is always no sugar added. These are some fruit products that we love. Below each picture is a suggested bariatric portion size with the corresponding calorie and protein content. The Del Monte Fruit Naturals can be found in the refrigerated section of the produce area. The frozen dark sweet cherries make a delicious dessert. 
The Little Snappers are a line of kid-sized fruit that comes in a variety of citrus, apples, and pears. These are great because the size is uniform and each piece of fruit is one serving. The starch group is the next food group in your meal plan. Foods in this group are high in calories compared to the other food groups in your meal plan. Starches also go down easily, which is also not so good. Imagine you put a cracker in your mouth, but don't chew it. It dissolves relatively quickly because of the chemicals or enzymes in our saliva that start to break down those starches immediately. By the time the starches get to your pouch or sleeve, they go down easily, allowing you to eat too much and get hungry again too soon. You only need two servings per day, so it is important to choose starches that are high in fiber because this will help to keep you full for longer. One serving of starch is 80 calories and 3 grams of protein. Some examples are listed. One half cup of breakfast cereal, one half cup of cooked oatmeal, one half cup of starchy vegetables, one slice or one ounce of bread, one third of a cup of cooked rice or pasta, and one ounce of pretzels, popcorn, or crackers is equal to one serving. Whole grain and whole wheat products are the best choice when it comes to bread, pasta, cereal, and crackers. Other whole grains are barley, millet, brown rice, and quinoa. Quinoa is a whole grain that is cooked similarly to rice, but it is also a complete protein. Whole grain and whole wheat products are made with the entire grain, so they include more fiber, vitamins, and minerals than products that are not whole grain. Regular pasta and white breads are made with refined or enriched flour, which is flour that is only made with the inner part of the grain, so it has less fiber and has been enriched with vitamins and minerals that were lost during processing. Starchy vegetables are also included in the starch group because they contain more carbohydrate than other vegetables. Sweet potatoes, potatoes, corn, lima beans, peas, and winter squash are starchy vegetables. Avoid cereals as well as sport and protein bars that are high in sugar. Other sweets such as Pop-Tarts, muffins, pies, cakes, donuts, and other baked goods should be avoided. These are very high in calories, fat, and sugar. You should also avoid sweetened beverages such as Kool-Aid, soda, Gatorade, and sweet tea. Choose low-calorie, sugar-free, and non-carbonated beverages such as water, unsweetened tea, and artificially sweetened drinks. Splenda, Sweet and Low, Equal, Truvia, and Stevia are artificial sweeteners that you may use. Starchy vegetables can be found in the produce section as well as in the frozen aisle near other frozen vegetables and near the canned goods. Whole grain breads are typically found near the bakery. Other whole grains, pasta, rice, cereal, and crackers can be found near the shelf-stable goods. Purchase grains such as rice, quinoa, and barley in bulk to save on money. Whole Foods has a great bulk section and you can purchase as much or as little as you'd like. Bread is often on sale for buy one get one free. If this is the case, you can freeze one loaf and keep the other in the refrigerator. When looking at the nutrition facts label for starchy foods, first take a look at the serving size. One slice of bread is usually one serving, but be sure to check. Grains that require cooking may either have a serving size based on uncooked grain or cooked grain. Next, take a look at the calories to see how the food fits into your meal plan. A starch serving is typically 80 to 100 calories. Also take a look at the dietary fiber. Fiber helps to keep you full for longer. Look for products that have at least 3 grams of fiber per serving. 5 grams or more is even better. It is also important to look at the ingredients when purchasing breads, pasta, and cereal. The first ingredient should be whole wheat or whole grain. This means that the entire grain was used to make the product. For the past few slides, I've been stating that whole grain and whole wheat products are the better choice. On the left side of the screen, you will see a picture of a whole grain. See that it is made up of bran, which is the outer layer that is high in fiber and B vitamins, the endosperm, which contains starch, protein, vitamins, and minerals, and the germ, which contains more B vitamins, protein, minerals, and healthy oils. Whole grain and whole wheat products contain all three parts, the bran, endosperm, and germ, which is why they are a better choice. Take a look at the Sara Lee white bread compared to the Sara Lee 45 calories and delightful 100% whole wheat bread. 
The white bread has 75 calories and 1 gram of fiber per slice, whereas the 100% wheat has 45 calories and 2.5 grams of fiber per slice. Not only does the latter have less calories, but it also has more fiber. Though whole grain products are a good choice, it is important to see how many calories are in one serving. Whole grain and whole wheat breads can range from 45 calories to 150 calories per slice. Compare the Sara Lee 100% whole wheat bread to the Arnold Whole Grains Health Nut Bread. The Arnold Health Nut Bread has 75 more calories per slice compared to the Sara Lee bread. This is a prime example of why it's important to compare nutrition facts of different products. These are some starch products that we love. Below each picture is the suggested bariatric portion size with the corresponding calorie, fiber, and protein content. The flat out Hungry Girl Fold It flatbreads are great for making pizzas, and you can also cut them into wedges and dip them in tuna or chicken salad. The market side butternut squash can be found at Walmart, but other grocery stores may have a similar version. This product is great because butternut squash can be difficult to peel and cut, so the hard work has been done for you. You can also microwave the entire bag for easy steaming. The fat group is the last food group in your meal plan. Foods in this group are very calorie dense, meaning there are a lot of calories in a small amount. For this reason, you are limited to three servings per day. Some fats are healthier than others, so it is important to make good choices. One serving of fat is 45 calories and 0 grams of protein. Some examples are listed. 1 teaspoon of margarine, 1 teaspoon of fat-free, low-fat, or reduced-fat mayonnaise, 1 teaspoon of canola or olive oil, 1 tablespoon of fat-free or low-fat sour cream, and 1 tablespoon of fat-free or low-fat salad dressing are all equal to one serving. Notice the hand depicted on the screen. One teaspoon is about the size of the tip of your finger, but it is always best to use a measuring spoon to measure the correct amount. This is especially important when cooking with oil or using salad dressings. It is very easy to use too much oil if you aren't measuring. Non-stick cooking spray such as Pam is great to use when cooking. It provides a nice thin layer of oil without overdoing it. Cooking spray is not calorie free though, so limit how much you spray. Choose fat free or low fat options when possible, especially when using mayonnaise, salad dressing, cream cheese, and sour cream. Liquid oils such as olive and canola oil are heart healthy oils. You can also look for oil based tub margarine such as Smart Balance. Avoid fats that are high in saturated fat such as butter, stick margarine, cocoa butter, and palm oil. You should also avoid fried foods and regular mayonnaise, salad dressings, and cream cheese. Also avoid salad dressings that are high in sugar. Always check the nutrition facts label and the ingredients. Look for refrigerated salad dressings in the produce section. There is typically a refrigerated case dedicated to these items. Other salad dressings, mayonnaise, and oils can be found near the shelf-stable goods. Oil-based tub margarines, cream cheese, and sour cream can be found in the dairy section. The most important things to look at on the Nutrition Facts label is the serving size and calories. Remember that one serving of fat is about 45 calories. So in this example, one serving would be one teaspoon, which is 40 calories. This is because one tablespoon is three teaspoons. Always measure your oil and dressings to avoid consuming too many calories. You've probably heard a lot about yogurt from your dietitians. It can be a healthy addition to your meal plan because it is high in protein, relatively low in calories, contains calcium and vitamin D, and contains healthy bacteria for your gut. However, just because a food contains yogurt doesn't mean it's healthy. Take these four yogurt dressings for example. These are various types of ranch yogurt dressing. Notice that the calorie content per two tablespoons varies between the brands. It is also important to note that all of these dressings only have one gram of protein per serving. So just because these dressings are made with yogurt doesn't mean they are good sources of protein or calories. Also remember that these yogurt dressings are included in the fat group, not the milk group. These are some products that we love. Below each picture is the suggested bariatric portion size with the corresponding calorie and protein content. 
The Bolt House Farms and Marketside Yogurt Dressings are two that we approve of because they are lower in calories compared to other similar dressings. These dressings can be found in the produce section in a dedicated refrigerated area. The Marketside Yogurt Dressings can be found at Walmart. Both brands come in a variety of flavors. Here are a list of references that were used for this presentation. Feel free to refer to some of these resources for additional information. This concludes our virtual grocery store tour. I hope this has provided some good tips for you during your next shopping trip. Remember to stick to your meal plan, always make a list, and always read the nutrition facts and the ingredients. Happy shopping!